Hello there, I'm John Muir Laws. I'm a wildlife biologist, an artist, and an explorer. And I get really excited when I look at Tony Foster's work. And what I wanted to do is to share with you, from those three perspectives, when I look at this art, what do I see? So I want to just walk you through with me, kind of as a scientist, what I notice about this. And as an artist, what are the lessons I'm learning? There's some really interesting challenges that Tony Foster has faced here. And how he's gone about those, I think, is, is, is really interesting to see. And um, also, as the, uh, the, the explorer in me, who likes you know, running around a landscape like this, what I'm seeing, what I'm noticing, um, all three of those perspectives just get me really jazzed about this artwork. So let's start with, as, as, as a scientist, as a, um, what do I see in this? Well, here, Tony Foster has gone to Greenland. He's on the, uh, on, in Western Greenland. And it is, it is bitterly, bitterly cold. There are these rainstorms that are coming through here and um, uh, regularly uh, uh, dumping drizzle. And so to, to do this study of these bergs out on the, on the ocean, he has set up a tent and securely staked that down because it's also winds whipping through here. And when it's drizzling and raining, he'll retreat inside there and work on this. And when the brief periods where the sun comes out, he's going to be able to pop out and, and in, enjoy the, the, the brief bit of, of Greenland sun. So, so look at this. You can actually tell that he's in a really high latitude because the angle of the light here is just is coming in at a really, really low angle. So this boulder here, you see it's on this side here. Look at how far up these sort of shadows are, are coming on this. If you were in some place in, the, 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 in, in middle latitudes, you're going to see he's got paintings where the, the sunlight's coming straight down on you. But here, this glancing, glancing light, you're at a really, really high latitude. So the sun never really gets high in the sky. And because of that, we have ice. We have frozen ice. And actually, he, he, he even took a sample of ice. This little bottle here on the bottom, that's iceberg. So he collected some of the ice. Of course, it melts. Now we've got this little bottle of water here. But that was trapped inside a glacier since the last ice age, right? So that's, that's, um, that's got that water there has a story to tell. And, but let's, let's actually look at the shapes of the ice, because this is, is really interesting. As you look across these different berg forms, there are really different, interesting shapes. These ones over here are, are, are angular, and these ones have this incredible vertical striation in them. So it, when I look at something like this, it makes me wonder about, is, did, were these things sourced from, from different locations? Are there parts of of glaciers that are more likely to make this sort of castle formation than, than these mountain forms over here. Let's start over here on the castle side. When I look at this, I, I, I can tell that when Tony Foster got up to this, this spot, he saw these caves and just this was really exciting. Because wouldn't it be for you, these are giant ice caverns going back into the rock. So you could, if you were brave or foolish enough, take a little boat and go back inside these ice caves. One of them, in the notes down here, he talks about it watching one of these collapse while he is out there. And then this over here on this side, a totally different structure of ice. So that's really, really interesting to me. Let's look at how that's handled from an artist's perspective. Because I want to, to particularly, as, as the, the artist in me, the part of this painting that gets me the most interest in is right here in these bergs. There are so many subtle decisions. The blends of greens and blues and purples in these rocks is, 
it, 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 you get the, 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 so light will come into ice and make them glow within. And so it's not just like when you're drawing a, a boulder, you're going to put the shadow on the shadow side. But these, they, they, you need to have your iceberg feel like it has this inner luminosity, often a sort of a bluish color. And we really get that here. You can get the sense, looking back into these cracks, you notice you kind of go back into these deep cracks in the rocks, and he's not punching in a dark shadow. You have the feeling that there's glowing light pouring out of these places. So that is challenging to draw, because when you get those intense colors, you want to kind of respond to that by kind of getting out some really dark, intense, that color of paint. If you put that down there, it's going to then be one of the darkest parts of that. So he has to balance. These are actually sort of light-producing things. That is, is really interesting to me. And there's also some very interesting decisions he's made about um, how and where he's used his lines. So before he put the watercolor on here, he came in with a pencil and he blocked in the locations of these different shapes. Because these bergs are going to be moving around while he's there. And so if you, you know, he has to decide at some point, I'm going to draw this berg here and not over here. Because he's up on top of this bluff for a full week. So um, let's take a look at the line work. And there's some really interesting decisions that he's made. I want to particularly direct your attention to where he's punching in a hard, bold line and where he lets that just be a soft, a soft line. And he wants to show that there's, there's depth in this, so that these are closer to you. There are these other bergs behind it. So if you look at what he has got going on here, he's drawn the edge of this close one with a really punched in line. He's not using that heavy line throughout the entire berg, but where he wants that to feel like you're, you're showing this one's here and this next one is further back, on that one that's closer to you, it gets a heavier line work. And what that does is visually it helps it pop out from that one behind. So take a look here. You see those soft lines there? There's more intense line work on this one and especially where those two meet. That's a deliberate choice. And what that does is gives you a sense of depth when you are looking at those, those, those pictures. So the little pencil lines in here and those colors are absolutely uh, masterfully handled. That, that really gets me excited. This part of this painting, um, I, 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 you, you could write you know, chapters of books about, about the decisions that you can make with watercolors. And finally, the explorer in me, kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but the explorer of me, I get to a place like this and I am, I am really, really excited. And I get the sense that Tony Foster is feeling the same sort of things here. He's seeing these caves. And, okay, yeah, those have to be in my picture. And then what are you going to do if you were here? I mean, look at all these rocks to just run around and climb up, down, jump around on. You can move around this landscape all the way down to this little beach here. And while he was there, some of the ice crashed off of these glaciers, made a huge tidal wave in this basin. The wave came in, splashed up on the beach, moved everything around on the beach, and after that, all of these artifacts that were there on the beach were exposed. So he goes down onto the beach and looks around and finds there are Inuit artifacts, there are um, fragments of bones from animals, there are pieces of pottery, there are shells, and all those items and artifacts, he draws those carefully. But, but here, you know, if you look at, at, at some of the, the plants, these plants are, are handled kind of lightly and loosely. These ones are drawn with a deliberate, careful, slow precision, because that's the way you see the little object that's in your hand. So this is just, this is painted with a slightly different style that just kind of puts it in your hand, in your lap. And look at the kind of artifacts he's found. All right, these, these teeth here, I'm wondering, maybe those are teeth from seals? Um, there, are, there are beads, there are projectile points, 
all sorts of interesting um, things that he's found. And he's also made the decision to take all of these and leave them behind. And I think that what we're seeing is a respect and, and, and a reverence for this place and for that if these are artifacts from an ancient, uh, ancient Inuit um, artifacts, he's respecting those and leaving them in the landscape there where he found them. So he's going to take them, appreciate them, and then return them. The last thing that this piece says to me is, is there's also kind of an, a, a poignant echo of, 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 of the, the conservationist in, in, in Tony Foster. So he's drawing ice that is melting. As he's there, pieces of these glaciers are calving off because the melting of these, glacial, uh, these, these glaciers is accelerating. He's watching parts of the caves collapse. And he collects a little sample of the glacier. And we're recording um, this one moment in history. And if you were to go back to this place 10 years from now, you would probably see less ice. If he had been there 10 years before, you'd probably be seeing more ice. And so drawing the Arctic and the ice is a, is, is a reminder to us, human beings on this warming planet, of our mutual responsibility to the ecosystems that we touch with our everyday decisions. And if sort of bringing the human element into there, you don't always see this in Tony's paintings, but in this one, there's one other little human element. And if you look right here by this iceberg, there's a boat. There's a tiny little boat um, that just sort of reminds us that we human beings are also part of this picture and gives you a sense of the scale, the vastness of this landscape.